There we go. Hello. Perfect. So, Rachel, how are you today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing good as well. Thank you so much. And what better way to, you know, have a good Sunday with a talented person as you, right? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, th th thank, you so much for, thank you so much for accepting. So welcome to the show. As I said, it is really cool to have you here. So before we start, I have to give you a proper, you know, proper welcome for someone as awesome as you. But before we start, uh, well, if you have seen some of my episodes before, you know exactly what I'm about to do. If not, that's fine. Well, let me show you that. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. I love that room is a lot bigger than it looks to fit all those people. Oh yeah, I will. the room well, that you, you're in. At some point, I mean, you know, small, I mean, we are small operation. I mean, we are growing every every day. <laughs> but at some point, we might have an episode on, on my thousand episode on Staples Center. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, although it's called Crypto.com Arena now. <laughs> It's okay. I'm in solidarity with you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so again, welcome, welcome here. So starting right now with everything, tell me how your acting career is. Um. Well, I. Uh, it's 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 kind of an interesting story. I I was actually um, working an office job. I was working a nine to five. I was a mm -hmm. graphic designer, um, just doing my thing and living my life. Um, but I decided like to shake it up for that particular time of year I was gonna take an acting class I'd taken a one I'd, I'd taken a few acting classes in college before just for fun okay. um, but I, I liked it enough where I decided to minor in it and um, you know I had my office job and my friends but I was like I need some other kind of activity or hobby that I want to mm -hmm. pursue and mm -hmm. get better at like maybe pottery or something like that or uh, book binding hat making something um, I went with acting because I heard there was a really cool acting studio that you can go and join. I audited the class. Um, this was Howard Fine. Um, they used to be on La Brea and Third, or was it Beverly and Third? I can't remember, but um, they've moved since then. But I heard really great things about it, so I went and audited. I liked it. Um, spoke to some of the teachers there, and I was like, okay, this seems like a good fit for me. Like, they, it is a serious studio, but like they also, you know, they they. I was really there for like the acting games, like the, you know, the improv games, the activities, things that are just really different from like a nine to five office life. Mm -hmm. Like you don't play zip zap zop at the office. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, totally. Yeah, and uh, so I, I got, I got in there. I was um, my teacher at the time was Laura Gardner. She's incredible. She has taught and coached all the greats. If you ever get a chance to um, study under her, I highly recommend it. Okay. Um, and she taught me and I believe it was nine other students and we were working on scenes and working on exercises and going through um, the foundations method and um, I just thought this is this is such a blast to have like in addition to my job of course um, and one day she um, we were talking and she pulled me aside and she was like how how are your auditions going and I'm like oh I'm not actually auditioning like I'm just in class for fun and she was like what and I was like I'm so sorry <laughs> and she was like no 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 like she's like you're you're really good though you have something special you really should try try one audition just try one mm. see how it goes and I was like okay maybe um ever since I was a kid I had a not great experience for a school project where we had to act in a, com a fake commercial in front of um the rest of our peers I think it was in third grade or something we had to write our own script create our own product and then be in a commercial in front of everybody else other seven and eight year olds which is terrifying if you've ever worked with kids <laughs> kids are great but like some kids kids are harsh with their opinions mm -hmm. but um I was doing this commercial with one of my best friends we're still best friends to this day and I forgot a line and she looks over at me and she elbows me and she's like that's not the line and I was like what and I said it again she's like that's not the line and um when I was a kid I was very, very shy. So this was incredibly difficult and traumatic for me. So since then, like any kind of acting, performing, even talking to people had been difficult. Um, mm -hmm. So the idea of going on an audition, horrifying. <laughs> um, but that year I was um, doing a lot of like, you know, 
growing and soul searching and things like that. And one of the things that I was doing was I'm going to do things that scare me. So okay. that year I swam with some sharks with a good friend of mine um, and a, a couple different things like that. I, I think I, um, did I do rock climbing that year? It might've been, I'm also a little bit scared of heights. <laughs> um, so I did something related to heights that year. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go on one audition. It won't kill me as long as I'm not auditioning for like some kind of extreme motocross thing. Mm. Um, it won't kill me, let's give it a shot. So I went and I did some audition for, I think it was like a real estate commercial or something like that. Um, and I went and I was like, okay, that wasn't so bad. I don't think I got the job. I don't think I did great either by any means, but it wasn't that bad. Um, so from then on, I was like, you know what, let me give this a shot. Like, let me, I'll, I'll do a little bit more. Like this, this is pretty fun. And I was still working at the time. And um, slowly I, I started in smaller projects and indie things. And then I kind of worked my way up and I'm now at a point where this is my job. <laughs> that's so cool. That is such an epic journey, but that's so interesting. Yeah, how oh, cool. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It, yeah, absolutely. And it's so interesting, stuff, right? That sometimes uh, the thing that, uh, that 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 scares us the most, or the thing that we don't see us doing, suddenly it becomes the thing that you are doing, and it becomes kind of your career. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You never know. So it's you know, it only it's baby steps. Baby steps. Totally. One like, thing leads to another. Yeah, it's never in huge leaps. It's always baby steps. Mm. I can agree with that. I can agree with that too. Cool. So in 2016, you were in America's Accord with Josh Ross. Tell me, was that like one of your first projects? And what did you learn from those first experiences? Yeah, that was my first um, project on, on, that was my first TV project. And uh, that was interesting because that was the first audition I had where I was like, wow, I blew that. That was terrible. <laughs> that was caca. Like... <laughs> It was awful. Um, they had us go in and they gave us a couple situations to improv. There was no script or anything. Um, and there was me and this guy that I'd never met before. I don't know anything about him. Does he also have improv training? Maybe. A lot of people were in the hallway and they were talking about like being at something called UCB and Groundlings. And I was like, no idea what that is. Um, but I went in and I'm pretty good with like coming up with ideas on my feet. So like they gave us the scenario and... Um, they were like, okay, go. And then they turned the camera on and it's just me and this dude that I've never met before. And we're just having this conversation and arguing. We're starting a fight and then resolving the fight. Okay. And they're watching that. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know what they want. And that's still the case to this day, even though I've been doing this for years. Like I, you still don't know truly what a casting director wants, but I left the room and I was like, wow, I should quit. <laughs> like that was awful. I don't even, I'm definitely not getting that one. Um, and then later that week I was actually at at work and they the producers called me and they're like hey we want to book you um and i was like oh cool and i was like what what audition was this because you sometimes as an actor like if it's the busy season like you audition so much and if they want you to come and work on their project sometimes you don't remember what it is um but uh, that was one of these cases and i was like oh okay awesome and they're like yeah this is the day right and everything and like you'll come to the studio like do the fitting and all that and i was like that sounds good um but you're asking me what, about something I learned um, and something I learned that a lot of people actually don't know is that a lot of these court shows, um, they're not real. Oh yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> until, yeah, you, you knew this already, but I didn't know that until I worked on it. I was like, whoa, I thought these were real people with their actual cases and this is like a real court. <laughs> um, and I've told a couple of friends that and they're like, wait, that's not real. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> But I mean, like, a lot of the stories are real, though. Like, the story that I was um, performing was written by one of the uh, producers, and that had that case had actually happened to her um, when she was living in New York City. Um, she had some kind of altercation with um, a roommate and paying rent and everything, whether or not she could actually stay in that room. Um, so I, I played her in that episode, and there were two other... Um, girls in that episode that were co-stars with me so yeah that was that was that was fun that was a lot of fun and we just did one take and it was over <laughs> wow so yeah cool. it's intense yeah i mean those type of shows yeah I, I used to believe the same that they were kind of a kind of a real but then i was like yeah i don't think they're real and then you know starting with this 
uh, with this podcast, then I'm like, yeah, definitely. Not really. I mean, that I've been mean, interviewed <laughs> a few that had that have participated in shows like that, and yet, mm-hmm. I mean, they're not real. And I was like, mm-hmm. well, I knew that. I mean, they're fun, but yeah, okay. Yeah, and a lot of people watch them too. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So cool. And then in 2017, you were in Informant, All Quiet on the Home Front, and Shut Up and Run. But uh, but tell me, like, like what are some of the things that you usually do to prepare a character? I mean, I understand, of course, that depends on the road, right? But like, what normally is kind of, is kind of like the first step you do in order to um, start the start with the creation for a character? Yeah, yeah. Um, I. Uh... It's cool because I've watched some of your other episodes and you've actually interviewed some of my friends and colleagues, people that I've worked with before. Um, and it was, yeah, and I, I, I probably have a lot of the same answers they do actually. Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, I do a character breakdown. That was kind of like what um, they taught us at Howard Fine. Like you, you go into a, build a backstory for your character according to things that are true in the script and um, tie things to real emotional stakes that I might have. That's the, generally the method I go with for most projects, but it depends, like like you said, on the project. And then um, tie those into the scenes. And yeah. my goal for each scene that I work on is to have it be real for me, because if it's real for the actor, a lot of times it ends up looking real for the camera as well. Okay, okay. And what do you think it's important to know when you are in the process to create a character? Um, well, one of the things I would say for um, actors to know is that it's great to be flexible. Mm. Because a lot of times we can build backstories for our characters, but a lot of times when we're doing that, we're, we're on our own. Um, especially if um, you're shooting something here in LA, like you go home and you work on the scene and you bring it to the table, but sometimes like, it's very possible, it just, this doesn't happen to me a lot, but it's very possible to where the, you, you go on set and action, you do your first take and the director has a completely different idea of what they want to do. Or maybe that was spot on with what they wanted, but now they want to try something else. Okay. Um, that happens a lot, especially in comedy. So it's great to be able to be have your backstory, but be flexible enough to where you can change it completely if you need to and change the context of the scene even. Okay, okay interesting. Wow, okay. And well, later on, you were in 308, uh, stuck in the middle with oh, it's Hugh. Yeah. Then uh, Red House Rising, the Carlotta Pato Chronicles. I mean. Oh, yeah, Carlotta Botox, yeah. <laughs> and like, That's tell a fun me, one. like, what are usually some of the things that you do before shooting a scene? Either, I don't know, you, let's say that you got like this playlist, depending on the role, that you listen to it in order to kind of uh, set the mood. Or you just like okay, I'm good to go. Let's you know like okay, let's let's do this. Like, what is your like like what is your thing before shooting scene? Yeah, um, you know, a lot of my friends do that playlist thing. I really like that. I, I keep telling myself I'm gonna do one of these days. I haven't remembered yet. But um, usually, what do I do? I think um, for me, the the moment before is really is a really strong starting point. Like, totally. if if that's not there, it's really hard to get into the rest of the scene. So I think. You know, when all the other preparation is done, the moment before is the primary thing that comes first. Like yeah. having all of your senses locked in, like your not just like your imagination of your sight, but like your smell, your touch, even like how cold is it in the room for you? Things like that that yeah. um, are really important for me because not only does it add to the scene, but it also helps me take my nerves off my mind. <laughs> That's amazing. That is really cool. And then. You were in wedding screeners. Tell me, what do you think it's important when you're in the process of storytelling for an actor? Yeah, um, that's a that's that's a great question. I think um, it's important to know what your job is in the story as the character. If you are playing um, wedding screeners, is actually um, written and uh, co-produced by a friend of mine, Peter Wisen, and. Uh, he was doing this movie. He's like, "Hey, I'm making one of my first features. Like, I don't think it's his first feature, but it's one of his first in like LA produced, anyways." Yeah. And he was like, "Do you want to want to work with me?" And I was like, "Yeah, let's let's do it for sure." Like, I always love working with friends is the best thing ever. You always make friends on set, but it's nice when you get on set and you're like, "Oh, 
I know you. Hey, that's awesome. Like, um, uh, uh, Sierra Carter, we've worked together twice now, um, in, uh, Keeping Up With The Joneses and Divorce Bait. Um, Keeping Up With The Joneses is out right now on Lifetime Movie Network, and Divorce Bait will be coming out next year. But it's always fun when you run into a friend. Um, but in regard to, back to story, you were asking me about story. Um, it's important to know what your character is meant to sure. do for the story. If your character is supposed to be, if you're not the main character, for instance, like I was in, in Wedding Screeners, if you're meant to help the character grow in some way or create some sort of obstacle or challenge, you have to know that um, that is what the uh, comedy is being used for, okay. to help the character grow. So maybe your character can be, you know, even more annoying than you was originally written because it helps create an obstacle for the character or something like that. Um, so it's it's good to know what your role is and how to help tell the story. Otherwise, you don't you don't want the scene to be all about you if it doesn't make sense. Totally. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And I think especially in comedy, right? If you like, when you really try to be funny, it's not gonna it's not going to it's not gonna work basically. Yeah, exactly. It's like, um, have you seen Always Sunny in Philadelphia? No. Oh, that is one of if that is one of my favorite shows going on right now. They recently became the longest running um, sitcom in the history of sitcoms. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah, they're a live action. This is their they're they're on season fifteen now. Um, I haven't seen all of it. I think I'm still on like season eight or something like that. But it is great. But they were talking um, about the the cast was talking about how like they have. Uh, co-stars and guest stars come on and the funniest ones are the ones that keep it as real as possible they're not trying to make the scene funnier because the scene's already funny yes. the writing is good the scene's already funny don't mess with that but if you make it real for you then it will be hilarious for yeah, the audience exactly exactly that's the thing that's the thing exactly wow yeah now this year you were in keeping up with the jonases free by noon life in LA, the horse bait the color your world pam and tommy the talk shortcomings, fun love in big sky, Montana, uh, Anubis, but like in general, what is like one of the things that you enjoy the most about acting? I think my favorite, there's a, there's a lot of things I enjoy. Okay. It's hard to list. It's hard to pick my favorite one. I think, I think it might have to be the, the teamwork that you experience on set. Um, when I, as a kid, like, when I started like really getting into movies, I'm like, oh, you know, it's hard to like, there's only this many really good movies. All these other movies are like not great. But then I realized like, it's really difficult to make a movie. Oh yeah. People are so complicated and you're getting dozens, hundreds of people together to achieve one goal and realizing how epic and monumental that is. Like, yeah, you're paying them, but still like to, to get tons of people together to achieve one goal is incredible. Um, so I just, I love that feeling of, you know, going to set at whatever time of day and realizing that we all have the same mission and we're all going for this one thing. We're just trying to make this project as good as it can possibly be. Okay. Um, and that feeling of teamwork and everybody, everybody knows what they're doing and everybody has their job. And, you know, if something goes wrong, everybody's helping each other. Oh. Um, that spirit of collaboration and unity, I think is really special. Okay. And uh, I think that might be because I, I grew up in a relatively big family. We had six people in a, a smaller house. So, like, we're used to, you know, trying to have to corral everybody totally. to work together. So when I can experience that, it's like, oh, this is a little bit like, a little bit like growing up, a little bit like home. <laughs> That's so awesome. And what advice could you give to those who are, you know, recently started acting? Um, I would say... Get as much training as you can. Okay. Read a lot of books about okay. the business if you can. Learn as much as you can, and then go with your gut. Mm. It's a it's a tough business, and I'm still I feel like I'm still trying to figure it out. But what I have learned so far is knowledge acquisition is awesome. But then when it comes down to decision making, you really have to go with your gut. Like if it's between two projects, and you're like. I would love to do both of them, but I can't. You really have to figure out how you're going to choose that. Um, in regard to um, decision making, when it comes to where your boundaries are going to be, I would say set your boundaries first. Like whether it's uh, 
if you're okay doing like nudity or shooting something in your underwear, if you're okay smoking cigarettes on camera, or if you're okay like eating meat for a commercial, like know those things ahead of time so that when you're faced with that like audition or that possible booking, mm -hmm. you can be like, oh no, I'm not willing to do that. You already know and you don't have to be like, oh, but like maybe I can like take a bite of this cheeseburger even though I'm vegetarian and I'll take the $2,000 like for the commercial. Like it's it, that that's where it gets difficult. So if you know ahead of time, like, you know, what your principles are and what your values are, like it, it's not as difficult to, you know, yeah. figure that out later. Totally. Wow. Now, if you could describe your career at the moment, but in a movie, TV show, or even a book, why not? What would be the title of it? Um, <laughs> that's a great question. I love that. It's funny, what's coming to my head right now is kids' books, because I feel like, I constantly feel like I'm learning. Um, there's a lot that I've learned, but there's ne I feel like I can't, I can never know enough. Um, have you have you read some of those kids' books, like uh, Little Rabbit Foo Foo or No David? Or... I <laughs> or think you, so, I mean, back here. I mean, if back you give a mouse a cookie. I mean, here at home, they, they got it translated, but I might. Do you have any favorite kids' books? Oh, I did. Like, back in the day, my mom had, like, this... I don't remember. This Walt Disney collection of, of children's books. And it was basically all type of... Uh, it was a lot of uh, adventures from the from uh, from Disney characters. Like, a lot of... Oh. Basically, the... Yeah, like, the... Uh, like, like, what she used to read to us. It was really cool. Oh, my gosh. That's so sweet. Yeah. I, yeah, I love I love children's literature. There's something really like people don't realize like how difficult it is. Oh my gosh! Hi, Mark. One of my friends just joined on here. <laughs> I just saw all the hearts go up, and I'm like, who's that? <laughs> um, I don't know. I the, for some reason the the kids books. I'm really feeling the kids books right now. What it would be called? I don't know. It would probably be called like Baby Steps to Baby Steps to Your Acting Career or something. Yeah. Because like I yeah, like we talked about before, like mm -hmm. anything you do, not just acting, everything is baby steps. Mm -hmm. Like you're just taking it moment by moment. Oh, Absolutely. more hearts. Absolutely. Hi, Paige. <laughs> and if you could describe also your career, but now on a drink, which one would you use? Choose. Ooh. Probably some kind of like long brew tea with milk okay. and boba. Have you had boba before? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think because there's a lot of there's a lot of chewing involved in this career. Mm -hmm. Like it's a lot of work, um, but it's but it's satisfying over the long run. And like and it kind of just it. Yeah, it's I would say it's like it, it's rewarding. But there's a there is work involved though, but the it pays off. <laughs> okay. okay. Now, like what motivates you? I mean, you know, we have, we all have those days, right? In which we just don't want to do it anymore. You know, we just feel tired. We just feel that it's not working. That nobody's nobody cares. That uh, we are just wasting time. You know, like whenever you get surrounded sure. with, with, with all of those toxic thoughts, what gets you yeah. back out of it? Just continuing. That is, that's an awesome topic. And I love that you're covering that because we really do need to address things like that. Cause it's not, it's not just like everybody's highlight reel. It's not all roses yeah. and daisies for everybody. Um, yeah, I, I definitely have days like that. And I, to be honest, I tell myself when I started this whole thing, I was like, this is crazy. You're acting, what? <laughs> you have a job to do. <laughs> um, but uh, the, what I told myself was that if at any point I didn't want to do this anymore, I don't have to. There's no pressure. Like I'm, you know, no one else is obligating me to do this. Yeah. Um, there's no, you know, honor to the family complex thing going on. Um, so, but I mean, since then it hasn't, it hasn't gotten to that point yet. So we're still here, but I think what's really important to do for when those toxic thoughts do come up is realizing like, okay, emotions are valid, but they are also just emotions. Mm. Um, they're not, it's not the end all be all. It's not, um, hard truth. They're just emotions mm -hmm. and it changes all the time. A lot of times I find when I'm feeling that way, it's because I'm thirsty or hungry yeah. or tired. Um, 
there is not a lot that uh, a nap can't solve. And sometimes you just need to take a step back and either be like, you know what, I, I'm not going to do anything else work related or productive for the rest of the day. I need a break. Um, and hopefully, like, we get can get to a point where we really start to be able to listen to our bodies and preempt any kind of burnout, whether yeah. it's physical or emotional. But yeah, it's that that stuff is very real, especially if you're especially if you're hustling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Now, if you had to describe this past year with three words, which ones would you use? Oh, this past year. Uh, roller coaster. Oh yeah. Mostly, yeah, I'm sure you can relate to that too. Oh, yeah. It's been a global roller coaster, really. Um, I'm I'm just glad to be safe and healthy through it all. Like it's 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 just been tough. Been through a lot. Um, and I'm and I'm grateful, very thankful. But yeah, it has been a roller coaster. Um, let's see what else. Definitely grateful. Um, I've had probably the busiest year that I've had ever um and it is it's it's really quite incredible just because like a lot of our industry is still shut down people are still you know it's it's scary to get a production launch because if somebody gets sick and then everybody gets sick it's that's a lot of money Mm -hmm. spent and wasted potentially um so it's yeah a lot of a lot of productions are still kind of trying to be extra cautious and some people are trying to see if you know things get better before they launch their their movie and things like that things have been like postponed and canceled so i'm really really grateful to be having the auditions and having the work that i have been able to and some of my favorite projects have been from this year as well um so grateful is definitely one of them and uh what else perspective I think um this year I've realized that uh it is it is a long game um I think seeing other people that I know people that you've interviewed like Brittany and Eric um they've been in this for a while and that's why they're so successful because they've kept at it and I really I admire both of them and all the other actor friends I have that have been doing this for so long and they've kept at it and they've kept working hard and kept, you know, developing themselves. They haven't, they haven't stopped and that's why they're slaying now. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And like yeah. my last question here, Rachel, is like, what can we expect from you in the future? But also, what are you expecting for the future? Uh, let's see, what am I expecting? Well, there are some things coming out next year that I can't talk about yet, yeah, but okay. Very excited, and maybe next time we chat, if there if there is the next time, absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I. What am I expecting for myself? I, I think I'm going to. Yeah, just keep working harder. My 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 method is generally keep my head down and keep working and <laughs> all of that. Um, I'm not. I, I set micro goals, but I don't set like huge massive goals like some of my other actor friends. That's just not how I'm wired. I think, but. Yeah, just keep finding the the joy in what I do. And uh, next year, I have um, we have a our, our our film Finding Big Finding Love in Big Sky Montana will be coming out next year, and so will Divorce Bait. So I'm really looking forward to those ones coming out. That's I amazing. I hope everyone gets to see them. That's amazing. I mean, Rachel, what can I say? It is really cool. It is really cool the the, the fact that you move on from that from that office job, you know and you started something new. You know, I can I can totally relate to that. I used to have two an office uh, an office job. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. I used to have it. It was well paid and everything. But I yeah. didn't like it, you know, and I and I was like constantly questioning myself like why they were putting the wrong people to take decisions, you know? And why I'm gonna mm-hmm. follow the and why I'm gonna follow the decision of someone when, when we all know that is not the right thing and Mm-hmm. All the type, I mean, all of those type of uh, things that if you're not friends with a supervisor, basically, you're, they're not gonna help you out to to continue yeah. to continue growing. So all of those things basically got me sick, and mm-hmm. then the whole COVID COVID thing happened, and yeah, same thing happened. I mean, it, the COVID thing, and they were like pressuring us a lot. They were basically harassing me, basically, I was like like that. Oh no, I'm uh, so sorry. Like what? Like sorry. calling you every moment. Like where are you? 
like you've been you haven't said anything and it's been a minute ago and you're like are you kidding me so i just got <clears throat> i just got fed up and i just got into an argument with with a team leader not, not even my supervisor and because i was i just said i just said what i wanted to say uh of course that that they didn't like it and then they were they didn't basically, like it yeah they basically hunt me down and found something that i that they could fire me and oh. they did that in the most horrendous way and you know it's so it's so interesting because when that happened i felt angry but not because of the situation because i was like is it going to be like that every time you know that you are working that you are going to work for this company and like mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how hard you work it doesn't matter how many achievements or how many shout outs or how many give like it doesn't matter anything anything like that at all because the moment they don't need you they're going to basically yeah they're going to basically they're going to leave you on the street and mm-hmm. and they're going to put some, someone else on your on your place and they're going to move on and you're like are you kidding me and all the time that I wasted and everything so those type of yeah. things got me got me mad because I was like I mean life shouldn't be like that you know I mean life is too short and why should we spend it it spending in a place that I don't feel like it and a place that that they don't appreciate what you do you know that they would treat you as exactly. a number not as a person regardless of how uh of how amazing because i mean every company says the same says, says the same thing every day right they're the best they're blah blah blah, blah. but uh but that's, that basically got me fed up and uh and as i said i started this then i started this podcast and uh here i am i mean of course that I had to find a temporary job in order to kind of sustain bills, right? But uh yeah, but of it's course, yeah. Right. You know, just part of the process here and there and uh, we're we are constantly learning here and the important thing here is to do what you what you want. I do believe that everybody comes to this world for something, but it's up to mm-hmm. you to discover what is that something, you know? I mean, it would be amazing if, if you get born and you're like, "Okay, this is what you're going to be." Uh good luck. You know, will be <laughs> But that's not the case. So you need to try a lot of things and work here and there. Exactly. And yeah. Yeah, and if you don't decide what you're going to do, somebody's going to decide it for you, right? Yeah. And yeah. And it's better that you decide. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So so yeah, so that that is that is what I that is like one of the things that I want to kind of to create here on my podcast to kind of show people that everybody can do whatever they want. And that's and that's why I've interview actors, musicians, directors, writers, producers, um athletes I'm working on. I'm working on that. Soon they're going to be athletes too. Then like the I next, have some athlete friends if oh, you want. Perfect. Send them in. Some be, like top perfect. top top 10, top 20 in the world. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. If you can send them that would yeah. be epic. But um, but uh, at the end of the, like the thing that I want to show is that everybody can do whatever they want. You don't have to have like this huge last name under your name or this mm-hmm. connection. I mean, yeah, connections do do work, but you need to put a lot of work to it in order to get those connections, you know, in order to get all of that and and I do and I do believe that 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 person people they think like well I mean I wanted to be I don't know I wanted to be an actor but I guess that this is not going to happen so I'm just going to find a job and stick there for the rest of my life and that's horrible because I mean you're wasting your talent and you're wasting your you know like 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 yourself like your soul like you like yeah like your own you're wasting it in something that you hate and what's the point of it you know I want to I constantly ask myself like like when i reach 60 or 70 if i reach there of course like am i going to be like it was good i lived the way that i wanted now it's time to retire you know or or i did the thing that i wanted super cool now i'm done with, i'm done now you know or yeah. or to be like typical like oh i could have done this or i could have done that like could have said this instead of that like that is one of the things that i that i i'm constantly struggling that to have no regrets which it is a lot easier to say than that did you know what i mean but but it's a process yeah yeah where you and i are very similar like that was the same thing for me i was like am i going to be really sad when i'm like old and i didn't give it a shot <laughs> yeah yeah probably and, and you know what it's so interesting because before i had this office job i used to work in the retail business you know clothing mm-hmm. stores stuff like that and even though that it was a fun environment to work work with it was really cool because of like all of the co-workers there and i remember that you, i mean you basically work every day you, you only rest like one and i was just yeah. looking i remember that i was working in this mall and i would see on the weekends so many people happy just buying stuff and, and and shopping around and i was like i want that and then i got the other yeah. job 
and then when I got the office job, I was like, yeah, I don't want that, you know, it's just so funny. It's not, yeah, it's not what you think it is sometimes, right? Totally, totally, yeah, and that's the thing, I mean, if, if you're gonna do something for the money, it's gonna consume you, I mean, it, it consumed me, it consumed me a lot, like, besides time, uh, health too, I was having constantly, constantly health issues with this company, because the like the stress it was just at the top so i was like at what cost you know at what cost i'm gonna continue pushing myself for 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 money you know what i mean so yeah exactly don't mind me i'm just plugging my battery in it's okay it's okay uh, but yeah, yeah. exactly your, your health if it takes a toll on your health it's like is it really worth it yeah so so yeah i would say that i would try to i mean i would say to everybody uh, even those who are watching this right now, or later on YouTube, or listening on Spotify or Apple Music, do what you want. You know, if you want to be a doctor, go be a doctor. If you want to be a lawyer, actor, musician, whatever you want to do, just go out there and do it. But of course, on the on on the meantime, um, yeah, it would be cool if you have like a like a temporary job here and there to sustain yourself. Because I mean, I tried to kind of uh, to kind of jump out of nowhere and be like, let's let let's see what let's see what happens. And no, that, that didn't that didn't work out. I mean, I was like, yeah, I need to find a job. <laughs> That's tough. So I can continue That's really it tough. And sustain myself. So yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, yeah, it is crazy. Yeah, and yeah, I would say to anybody thinking about it, just try it. Yeah, just try like it. it. If you don't like try. it, you can you can go back to what you were doing before. <laughs> just yeah. try it. Yeah, I mean, as I as I said to a friend, I was uh, that he that he's thinking about to start into the whole streaming business. And I was like, I mean, what's the worst thing that could happen? That it didn't work? You know, you already have the worst outcome, which is nothing. So why not trying it? I mean, if you don't like it, that's fine. At least you tried it and then you move on to something else. Or who knows? Maybe you'll be like, you know what? I don't, I don't like this, but I like the other side. So I'm going to work on the other side. You know, and there's like a lot of things that, that I do believe that sometimes we we just like to complicate things because we are complicated yeah. people. And that's it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Preach. Yeah, I agree. There we go. Awesome. That was as simple one. as that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but Preach. Jeremy, uh, as I was saying, Rachel here, uh, it is so cool what you do, uh, and it is so amazing that your career is you know is, is starting to uh, to get you know to get more roles here and there. As I was checking uh, like your whole resume while I was uh, doing these questions, I was like, okay, you know, like there is a, a constant upgrade, and uh, and that is really cool. And I'm super sure that eventually. I um, mean, you know, as, as I said to all of the actors that I've interviewed, I'm super sure that we're going to see all of you everywhere. You know, we're going to see you everywhere. Oh, we're thank you. About, I hope so. Uh, like basic and yeah, commercials, TV, movies, everywhere. I mean, who knows? Maybe uh, an action figure or something like that, you know? I would love that. Oh, yeah. I would love that. Yes. <laughs> Sign me up for that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and, and as I said here, uh, it is really inspiring what you do. And, and I'm super sure that there's a lot of people who who um, who get who who are inspired by 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 what you're doing, but also about your story. So that is super cool here. And also, I want to thank those who are watching this right now. If you're watching, we thank so much. And if you're watching this later on YouTube or even later here or listening you know, on Spotify or Apple Music, make sure that you follow Rachel in, in all of our social media. Normally, you know what I would say is for you to put pause, leave a like, subscribe, follow. It helps me a lot. And then it's holidays. So who cares about being healthy? Go eat a cookie or two or three or five or maybe the whole box. Why not? Um, yes. <laughs> and then go follow Rachel. Leave a million likes. I mean, let's make sure that everybody knows about her work and how how much dedication she put she's putting into it. Oh, and then come back. And Rachel, before I send you off, I need to send you off properly in an epic way. So. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. You it's really amazing that you fit that many people into your room. Uh, I'm very impressed. Um, at some point, we're, we're, we're going to have live audience. Listen, trust me, at some point, <laughs> we're going to have live, live, live audience. And of course, then you will be back on the show. And then I will tell you, see, now we have live audience. <laughs> but, um, oh, but in the meantime... We have one right now. Yeah, but in the meantime, <laughs> keep being amazing, keep killing it. And uh, happy holidays, too. And I'll see you in the next one. Sounds good. Thank you, Dan. No problem. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.